I'm going to talk to you about a great, great mattress, one that I have experience with, and it's Helix Sleep. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Bob, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. I took the Helix quiz, and I was matched with the perfect mattress for my daughter, and it works for her. She really loves it. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. You will. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Bob. That's helixsleep.com slash Bob. You need it again? Of course you do. helixsleep.com slash Bob. Take the quiz. Get the mattress. It's so easy, and you're going to sleep well. Here's something you can all relate to. If you can afford it, if you're able to, you shop online. And we've all seen that promo code field, and it just taunts us. It taunts us at checkout. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. And thanks to Honey, I was able to save, I think it was like eight bucks on a pizza. And that's significant. Honey has found its over 17 million members over $2 billion in savings. And if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Bob. That's joinhoney.com slash Bob. Hey, it is Bob Saget, and it's Bob Saget's here for you. I'm going to try to do a short intro because this is going to be a long conversation, I think, because I really like my guest today and haven't connected with him in a long time. It's John Resnick of the Goo Goo Dolls. Um, This is the guy that wrote the song Iris from City of Angels. Uh, He's so talented. They've had so many albums, been nominated for so many Grammys, and he's just a very special guy and he and we met he came to my comedy show and i've known him off and on for years um so i'm really happy to be talking with him and see how he's doing and he just uh came up with a christmas album and it's quite wonderful and there's a, a also a variety special he did with robbie um and it's the Goo Goo Dolls, it's Christmas all over. And there it is. And you'll be seeing a lot of that. And it's got some really wonderful Christmas songs on it. I never thought the Goo Goo Dolls would do a Christmas album. And it just feels good. It feels good. And we're all of the same mind, which is to get us back to a place where we can perform live again. And I know that he wants to. And so we're going to be talking about that and talking about his music and talking about some, you know, showbiz uh, fun stories and uh, pseudo horror stories coming up and what we want you to do is rate review and subscribe to this podcast uh, you know what you do or you can follow it depending on how you listen to it just go up to there that top thing tells you that oh, that's Rodney Dangerfield and uh, and uh, <laughs> and Red Fox that I'm pointing at if you're watching on YouTube which most of you are not so you didn't miss anything but you can see it if you ever look at my YouTube it's the same picture I just sit in a leather chair Anyway, um, this is a special, special episode, uh, which I think all of them are, right? Because that's, it's my podcast and I love it. And I'm sending you guys a lot of love. Uh, here we go. Let's let him in right now. Uh, here he comes, Mr. John Resnick. How are you, man? Can I'm you hear me? I'm all right. I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great. You sound great. Damn, what a world we're in. What the hell? <laughs> I know. It's like, I don't know. It's like one day everything was fine, then the whole place went to shit. <laughs> just, 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 we're, just, we're living in a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even allowed to have friends over for the holidays to use your toilet. I'm, I know. You know. Yeah. Well... Most of the time when my friends come over, I really don't want them. I let them use the one in the basement, but yeah, you know, I got but, the one that, that cleans your pooter, the, the water. So they're not love, using it. Do no you love using, that? 
I love it. I love it. If if I was a dog, I would drink out of it. <laughs> my wife is like, you're not getting one. And I'm oh, like, you have to. You have I'm to. Like, why? Why can't we have a Japanese toilet seat? Robbie's got a Japanese toilet seat. Thank you. You know, and and she's just like, because it's disgusting. And I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm no gonna Japanese I'm gonna send you a link to my toilet, and you're gonna look at it, and you're gonna show her the animation. <laughs> It's insane. It's it's the best, and that's what you know. It is privilege. Yeah. It's it's a it, and it's not white privilege. It's all human being privilege to have yeah. your pooter cleared out. Yeah, but then don't you still have to dry it off? You or- do, but there is a dryer. But how long am I going to sit there? And I'm afraid I'll fry my nuts. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a, it's like a dim sum warmer or something. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you john are you, uh, you're in buffalo no i'm i'm actually i'm home in new jersey and great uh, things are going crazy here so it it's like we're all sitting at home and you know we'll figure it out yeah well you've done some wonderful things really wonderful during this i mean the christmas album is insane to, it's fun and, right it's it's so fun and your manager has been a friend of mine a long time uh, mm-hmm. through my manager, Tim Sarkis, Pat Manuel is yours, and he's just such a lovely guy. And yeah. he told me how excited you were about this album, and then I listened to it, and then I watched the trailer <laughs> for your for your Christmas special, which comes out December 12th. Yeah. And that's going to be on fan tracks. Yeah. And so that, it's great. It's, it's cool. so it's it's fun it's campy but it's sincere so yeah. it's like and i don't know i mean you you before we knew each other before i met you and begged you to do things for me <laughs> and you did my scleroderma benefit which meant so much and it helped us make so much money and you're you're just so you know you're just a real special guy besides being amazing thank as you. an artist thank you very much and to get robbie on a plane you let him sit up and it, you you guys he doesn't have to go in the back of the plane ever you make you let him be with you right <laughs> yes we don't we don't fly in a private jet we don't you know we just you know i don't either i don't either and you don't make him go like in, i don't know why he's such a funny guy he's so funny you want to razz him because he's yeah. always got that look in his eye like he's up to no, some little he's devilish he's to, thing general, generally he's up to no good so yeah it's but, fun though but, uh, He's like, his idea of no good, though, is eating a bowl of cereal at midnight and then going to sleep, <laughs> you know, like pack a bowl, eat a bowl of cereal, and then right. he's out, you know. But, it's different than it was in the early 80s. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the early 90s. <laughs> you know, the early 90s, geez, God. Well, and the, the early, early 80s. <laughs> the, and, the, and the bots. <laughs> the, we're in a, we're in a fucked up world we are, uh, we are. i don't what, I, what what's troubling you about this fucked up world well we kind of have the same timeline oddly i'm 10 years older than you or eight years i don't know how much but i'm older but we st- our, our careers kind of started at the same time in 87 mm-hmm. yeah so right and so it's a three decade career and then i was a fan of yours from the moment you started um I mean, and you know that because I would come to the concerts to try to come backstage. Uh, and then finally I had enough. Cr- Hi, it's the dad on Full House. I don't know. I did a special. Well, once I did the special, then you, then I could come back. Yeah. But, right. uh, <laughs> and you even came to see my stand-up, man. You, it was you were... awesome. Thanks. So I just got to say, if if nobody out there has seen this guy's stand-up, you got to go. It's It's ridiculous. It's ridiculously funny. It's piss your pants funny. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now's the time where people actually are doing that. Mm-hmm. They, pissing they're, their just, pants. they're pissing their pants. They're, they're, I'm, doing a, I'm doing one drive-in. Um, actually, I think when this is coming out, which is right around now, I just did it. And uh, it was great. Was it fun? How <laughs> it, did was, take, it was amazing. Tell people how you did it. How did you do that? It was, uh, it was set up at the Irvine Spectrum, and they have a oh, drive-in. Yeah. Right. Wow. People have been doing it uh, through the Irvine Improv, and they've had a few people that they thought could do it. And they built a stage, and is I'm away from everybody, and they're all in their cars. 
So unless they're spitting lugers into each other's windows, they were safe, you know? Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. Was it weird or was it fun? It it was um, kind of wonderful. I had yeah. to experience it. I don't I don't want to make a career out of it. Uh, there are people that just want to perform so badly, and I do too. That's why I said, hell yeah, let's do it, because it is it's about as safe as it can be. I mean, unless, yeah. you know, I mean, cars are far apart. The cars are socially distanced. Yeah. So, um, and they hear you on the radio station that you tune in. I hope nobody's battery got burned out, you know, and just stayed there all night. <laughs> now, well, you, you did a streaming thing in October that was really cool, right? Um, I, I did a million streaming things, but I'm not, there was sure. one, I just looked, yeah, I, I mean, I can only Google you. Yeah, that's funny that you, you're you the Google Dolls in Google. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> like, I think you should get a piece of that. <laughs> I would love a piece of that. Oh, my grandmother. <laughs> but so, well, there, was a, there was a big one in October. There was one that I saw that was like, maybe it was your first concert in October, uh-huh. streaming-wise, or were you doing them before then? Uh, well, in October, oh, oh. I know what you're talking about. That was cool. That was with all the crazy lights and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that was the first one that I did. I was uh, early in the year when this pandemic started. I was, I was just doing a lot of stuff where I was just sitting on a bench in my house, just playing a song here or there for whoever wanted it, you know? So, so that was cool. You know, um, I saw some of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you did- it's, it's weird. It's been a weird year. It's been a bad year, it's, it's, mm-hmm. but it's also been a good year, which is why your Christmas album, I was like, they did a Christmas album? You did a Christmas album. I mean, it, this is yeah. th- this is the time to do this right now. Yeah, um, I thought and it, so. Uh, it, uh, it's a million percent, and I was raised Jewish, um, but I got the your Christmas album at a discount with a promo code so <laughs> that's good that's, that's my, good see that's the anti-semitic <laughs> joke that i'll get notes for but I, here, this is the the album is called uh goo goo dolls it's christmas all over there it's probably, it is it's backwards but it it has uh is it backwards to you no, it looks fine oh cool <laughs> it's, it's perfect. It looks fine but you wrote original songs i mean this is christmas is you right that's us and uh well me and uh the keyboard player and the guitar player from the band brad and jimmy uh and, and Chris, you ain't getting nothing too but you ain't getting nothing's great I've, I've listened to it whole damn thing christmas all over again that's uh, great petty song great petty tom petty yeah song. you i was reading a billboard article with you it wasn't research yeah. i just wanted to go like well i don't want to ask him all the stuff he's been asked already and you were saying your favorite concert would be the the heartbreakers, the people to yeah. see live. Yeah, amazing. I mean, I I I never had a chance to see him. I had a, I did get a chance to talk to him for about forty five minutes twenty years ago, and man, what what a generous guy! What a what a nice guy! It was just yeah. I'm terrified to meet famous people because Sting was such an asshole to me. You know, oh, he, was, he was. I think I did something rude to him, but he wasn't nice to me either. Maybe what'd I, I. What'd you do to him? I don't think I mentioned the inward draw, which is where you hold your your. You don't uh, ejaculate. You hold. Oh, so it. you know that. Yeah. You know. But, see, a guy like you knows that. I'm. I know. I'm just anything, like anything like that. I, can you I can you please send me a link to the information about the I'll inward do that draw with my toilet. Which is, Thank you. You're going to get a bunch of links when this is over. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, what what happened? What what did you what ha- what was the interaction with Sting? Well, I think it was one of those because I don't like meeting famous people because I'm just like I'd rather meet a famous person who's in a different field than me. You right. know, because what do you say to Sting? Hey, Sting, how you doing? You know, when's the last time you you know whatever? I don't know. You know, what kind of strings do you use? I don't know what to say to Sting. <laughs> so so I said. <laughs> I said, Hey, you know, I've been, he's hello. We were introduced. And then it was like, I said, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan and and you've been a big influence on, on, on my band and my music. And he looked at me and he said, don't blame me. And then I was just like, Oh, he's being cheeky. That's a British thing. He's being cheeky. And then, but then he put his hands one on my solar plexus and one on my back. And he stood there. 
holding my diaphragm and I was just like, I was like, wait, wait. And then he took his hands off me and he kind of gave me a, like he just, he had just smelled cat food. And he gave me he that was look. checking your chi or something. He wanted to I see. Know. Apparently what, it was what, no what was his look after he <clears throat> let go of your body? Uh, well, like he had just smelled a can of cat food. Oh, so you truly, know? he was, <laughs> he seemed repulsed, is what he you're saying? He seemed repulsed by my aura. <laughs> but that doesn't make any sense because you're such a good energy. I don't know, you know? I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I was just like, but I was like, all right, thanks a lot, pal. And then I left, you know? Well, I was at a friend of mine's wedding, and he had performed at it years back. Um, and John Lovitz was there. Mm -hmm. talking to sting and he knew sting from saturday night live um mm -hmm. uh, or other parties because john seems to know everybody mm -hmm. and i walked over just to them and i didn't think sting would know who i was necessarily because you know a, a, a lot of british people are just now discovering me because of you know the world um yeah but 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 the, he why would he have watched shows that I did and would he have seen my specials and why would he and does he watch comedy at all I mean I would think he does I mean but anyway I walked over and see what we do to ourselves this head game that's why I don't like meeting people either yeah but I was just I had just given a speech at the wedding Sting had just played a song at the wedding and I walked over and and said to Sting about Lovitz is he bothering you <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me like I was insulting Lovitz, like I was doing the worst thing in the world. But that's my thing with Lovitz anyway. It's, right, okay. You don't make fun of John. You're not his friend, although he can be very sweet and sincere also. But right, right, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So you, you have you you've been doing virtual performances at all? I've Not performances, but this podcast has been a real good place for me. It's yeah. been, I, I love it because it's, it's a regular thing and I've been, do I've been doing a lot of it. And sometimes I call people directly and just they call me and leave their numbers and I see how they're doing. And other sure. times they talk to an artist as high as you're not, you're not high, but I mean high up the, the art chain as yeah. yourself or a friend, which I think are I you? would like to consider that we're between yeah, acquaint absolutely. acquaintance and friend. Friends. Yeah. yeah. We, I think we are friends. But I hope we are. I hope yeah, we are. which means when this is over, we need to do a meal of some kind or something, something Absolutely. like enjoying it. Time, you don't, you don't drink, so I not I, anymore, not right. anymore. But uh, but I love to mix martinis, and okay. I like I love being the bartender, and I love ordering the wine at dinner. That's so, hilarious. You really know wine. What's that? I did. Yeah. I did. You right. Know? But see, that was one of the things about the old times, and when you were in a band. There was a, a record company guy in every city you went to. And they all right. had expense accounts. So you, so they would take you out to these crazy restaurants. And then you hook up with the sommelier and you go, what's really good? What do you really love? And that's how you learn about wine, you know, you, yeah. on somebody else's dime. You know? <laughs> I'm stupid <laughs> enough. It's always me. I'm always picking up the check and I, I live retail. I yeah. don't know. I like taking people out. but um, I do too. By that, I mean killing them. No. <laughs> <laughs> so i got so many questions because but i also i'm just happy to talk to you this yeah, is it's good uh, to the, talk to you do you talk to friends on here a lot have you been doing facetimes with people no <laughs> no, no i've been, no, i've done a couple no. business ones a couple yeah i mean i really haven't i mean no nah, no nah, i haven't done the zoom thing much i mean except for work and and you know this is cool though. This is like, you know, I'm just hanging out in my bedroom, you know, doing this right. thing. Yeah. You know? But, but, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm staying in touch with people. It's mostly, uh, texts, texts, uh, right. you know, of ridiculous shit. You know, that's, that seems to be the way men communicate these days instead of, Hey, just thinking about you, bro. Wanted to say hi. It's like, they send you a picture of a guy with a huge cock. And yeah, then, what's then, that? That that one guy has traveled, and he's—I don't think he's, he's alive anymore, from what I understand. No, he's that. not. He's not alive because I got so many different iterations. The other day, I got one. His name was Wood, 
<laughs> and the other day, I How redundant. One. Yes, I know. It's like, <laughs> that's what else would you be named? Um, and uh, I got, there was an iteration of it where it was uh, the hair dye dripping off Rudy Giuliani's oh, yeah. forehead, and that guy was in it. <laughs> so, oh, no. So it was awesome. Oh, so he took hair dye to another level, whoever made yeah, that. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I, you know, I think he should be times man of the year because he has made more people envious. <laughs> but than, I mean, and, if the only problem with that, if you if it's that big and you fall off a boat, you get pulled to the bottom. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, like, I'll, I would take that risk. You know? <laughs> I'd stay on dry land. <laughs> <laughs> won't be dry long with that. That's a, but that's actually for me the symbol of 2020 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because normally is. if somebody sends me a dick pic i'm like i have a joke i had a joke about it i can't do it i'll probably be canceled with everything i say but um people send me dick pics and i block them so i'm a cock blocker that was a, hey! pun. It's a pun <laughs> so and you did a pun in the in the christmas video you were like um freezing my bells off and then you yeah. were like do you get it i mean that's i live for that shit that to me is that's a joke that people go, oh, dad joke or whatever. But yeah. everything is a pun. All the best comedians, look at everybody. Look at the our favorite comedians. Look at Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock yeah. or, or or Bill Burr. There's there's always something in there where you bring something. You, it's wordplay sometimes, besides the poignancy of what you want to say. Yeah, and I'm you do that fascinated. in your music. Well, I'm... Uh, sometimes, but but you know, uh, I, pretty I'm pretty a lot. I'm here to not let you be shy about how good you okay. are because well, I'm a I'm a you. nutty fan over your your talent. But it's like I'm fascinated by comedians because it's it's such an interesting life, you know. And 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 I know you know Adam Ray, right? Yeah, yeah, and Brad Garrett. And, uh, Absolutely, Brad, I'm not Brad Garrett. I'm sorry. And and Brad, Brad Williams. Brad Williams. I yeah. got him confused with the. Other yeah, they're, they're, well, they both have height differentials. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't <laughs> yeah, they, say that. I didn't no, say I that. No, I did. They could okay. be in a, back in the olden days, they'd be in a tent show, you know, that yeah. would travel. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> but, well, look, I, I, I love both of them. I've known them both yeah. forever. So I can, Brad Garrett is taller than me. He is a giant. And well, Brad Williams. Really tall. I'm 6'4", but Brad's like, I think he's 6'8", or something, or but Brad Williams, you could catapult him into your neighbor's yard. I mean, <laughs> sorry, what were you going to say about Adam Ray and Brad? Oh, Adam, 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 and Brad. I've been on their podcast a couple of times, and like that life. I mean, there's a thing. It's like all my friends are humorous. They're clever. They're witty. I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them are. But when you get in, and this first occurred, this first happened to me when I was hanging out with Bobcat Goldthwait. You know? I love him. I love him. He is, he is one of the funniest human beings. And it was just like... Always was. I mean, he I, hid behind that. He didn't hide. That character was what came out of him when yeah. he first came on the scene. But that whole San Francisco world and, and Robin, God bless Robin. and mm -hmm. I mean, it was... Uh, Bobcat's so talented. Go ahead. Sorry. He's unbelievable, man. But so, so he was going to direct a video for us and uh, he was in Buffalo doing a show. So we, we got together and hung out and um, long story short, he didn't wind up at, at, you know, directing the video because everybody at Warner brothers at the time were assholes. So he didn't get a chance to do it, but we bought the story from him, you know, and then we didn't get to do it either. But um, so anyway, um, I thought I was going to say something funny because I'm hanging out with a comedian. I got to say something funny. And he just like slam dunked my joke, stepped on it, and then took a piss all over it. It was just, <laughs> it, it's such a different level of like, you know, it's, it's just crazy. I, I don't know how you guys do that. You know, well, it's, it's mutual. I mean, you know, I'm, I, I love music. I, I've been doing it in my shows forever, but I'm mm -hmm. not, I, I can't, I watch you mesmerized, you know, and that, but comedically, I was, one of the things I did at Stand Up Wise, I went and did Dave Chappelle's um, comedy camp mm -hmm. in Ohio. And yeah, that cool barn that he's got. It was so amazing. Right in a cornfield. It was, it was 
it was ins- awesome. it was insane and it was socially distanced people and masked and i i was able to hang with with friends that i don't see and we were just laughing our asses off i was yeah saying terrible shit backstage and they were i mean i was with louis ck and and Chris Tucker and Darnell and Michelle Wolf and Dave and Dave Chappelle is one of the best people there is. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, I mean, um, a lot of integrity. That guy, that guy's like, I. You know, you know what's weird about Dave Chappelle, even though he's so funny, I always feel like, I always feel like, man, there's some intense shit going on behind that. Hundred percent. You know, like. That is like that is a brilliant person, and that's the other thing too. It's like so many funny people that I know are, I mean, you know, who are professional comedians, and that um, there's there's a level of intelligence and intensity about them, you know, and it's just like you know, musicians are just like worthless. <laughs> they just kind of hang around smoking weed, and, you know. So do comedians. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I mean. Do you smoke weed? I used to. In the early I mean, 80s, I had never smoked weed because I lived with my parents through college because right. I was I was held back mentally. And <laughs> uh, I worked in the deli, and, uh, and I was making films, doing comedy since I was 17. And then I got to L.A. in 78, and I, for two years, smoked weed. From the moment I landed to the moment I said, I, I don't want to smoke anymore. I'm not getting enough done. Yeah. So, it's good if right. you know how to do it. If some people love it, a lot of my friends love it. They all yeah. try to get me to vape and stuff. Yeah, I. You, you know what's crazy is is that, uh, like, yeah, I know, I know. This is like musicians. They make you're on the bus and they're smoking bongs and drinking espresso at the same time. And I'm like, come on, pick a team. Like, you're gonna exactly. are you trying to wake up and chill out. What's going on? And Red but, Bull and vodka just started killing all the kids in Miami because yeah, right. they didn't realize you can't do that to yourself. I mean, you no. can. No, you can. That'd be you a know. good thing to make Red Bull and vodka already pre pre mixed in a can. That would be great. Just put I don't a know scu- why they haven't done it. I don't know. <laughs> Probably they'd be in jail. <laughs> yeah. When I when I first saw you, obviously the name was the song that you always say kind of started you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, with well, that, with, commercial success. You, right, you had two two or three albums before that album. Four. But geez, God in heaven, if people go through your songs, they 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 flip out because, and I'm sure you never do that because it's your career. You're always growing. You're always going, oh, I got to record another album or I got to wait for it to come to me. Yeah. Um, and then what does this time do to you? Does this... I know you're working. I read that you're working on a new album. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on a new record. People ask me, are you working on a new act? And I'm like, well, I was ready to do a special, but 20 minutes of it, it doesn't exist anymore because it, right. it it's not relevant. Right. I mean, so let me ask you a question. <clears throat> I mean, when are you going to have a new special out? And and what what do you think? I mean, the the content of it is going to have to reflect this year. One hundred percent, it's got to. But yeah. it's like, is it too soon? I mean, there's a quarter of a million people dead in this country. It's yeah. like, what is too soon? Or or like, when is it? When when is the appropriate timing, comedically, to address this? Well, for me, it's when I can safely do a show, and everybody that's in that theater is safe and it's a theater and we're inside unless unless it's not safe for two more years but i think it will be because of the vaccine i do too and i was same as you i know you guys were touring you had a tour with train coming up yeah well no we did the tour with train we had we had another tour coming up i don't remember with who lifehouse and um and yeah and then all this happened it was like Yep, yeah. that's so, what I did. I, t- I, had, I had to cancel Canada, and now everybody wants to move there. And, and <laughs> I Jim really Ga- want to move there. It's so funny. It's so terrible. Jim Gaffigan says, yeah, well, just any problems in the United States? He has an old old piece of stand-up that he put out recently. He will just move to Canada. And then he, he was doing the show in Canada, and he said, I don't remember if we that we were asked 
yeah. by, by Canada. Right. <laughs> I don't, they, don't, I, they don't want us. I don't think so. I don't think they want, like, anybody angry or, you know, we're just, I think it's going to be okay because there's good people out there putting out good messaging. If you listen to any of your songs, like anybody that I've ever loved, um, and I, I forgot the song that you said makes you cry no matter what. It was in an interview. What's the song that always makes you cry? You said it in Billboard. Uh, I think it was probably probably a, a song called Acoustic Number 3 or or Better Days, some one of those songs. Well, better, I- days is, better Days is uh, on this Christmas album so appropriately, and it's so applicable to 2020 it's almost like you wrote it for now and who is that girl that sings it with you on this thing okay her name is sydney mcgorman and she's she's um the keyboard player's daughter the guy who played the piano on it that's his daughter and then he played it for me he brought it in um and he played it for me and he said he said um you know i said wow that's really awesome and he was like, well, I can take it home, work on it with her. I'll fix the vocal. I was like, don't touch it. Because that she's seven years old. And it's like that purity. There's no pretension, no affectation, nothing. That kid sang that song right from her heart. And I was like, no, this is the way I envisioned this song for the last 15 years. You know, and um, and she she killed it. You know why? Because she had a big heart. And she doesn't know how to fake it. She doesn't know how to fake sincerity. She hasn't learned it yet. She hasn't, no, learned, she hasn't what's, learned it. What screws you up as, a, as as you get older, you get all this shit that just takes away the purity of what yeah. we're supposed to be. Yeah. And then, but what she did also, it was just so perfect because it makes the, the songs are so emotional anyway. You know, maybe we can find better days. And she's, it's her future. Yeah. It's not it's not yours or my future as much as it's her future. And yeah. and she's so it's she's singing deep from her soul. It's really everybody should hear it, but they should see the thing too. I mean, she's adorable. Yeah, she's adorable. She's 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 beautiful. She's a special kid, man. You know. And I got I mean, you know, we all think our kids are special, but right. she's she's well, she's not my kid, but I think she's special. I think are you my sure? Are you sure she's you, you, she's not your kid for sure? I am definitely sure she's not. She's not <laughs> There's she's a question. Not. You'll never be asked that question. <laughs> no, it, you know what's funny? It's it's crazy. <laughs> my wife, we have a three year old, and uh, and I love just listening to her. Man, I don't care what kind of crazy riff she goes off on. She's like, you know, whatever crazy thing she does, she insists on taking all her clothes off. And running around the house screaming. And I'm like, all right, let's run around the house screaming. I don't take my clothes off, but I run around the house screaming with her because it's like, it's good for me. It you is. Know? Yeah. It is. Yeah. That's what people do. They lose their, their child. That's what so many things have been about. So many works of art have been about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you lose your, that's what, I mean, the idea of Benjamin Button was to take that premise and flip it. Right. That you evolve to be a baby. Wouldn't that be cool? I guess. We, except we will. Only... We're, we're mean... going to be babies again. You and I are going to be shitting the bed. You know. <laughs> so you Someone's do gonna... think you think there's another life after this one that you come back and you get to suck a tit again? When I say that, I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it I could be a man God. boob. I don't want to offend okay. anybody. It could be a man boob with 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 Similac uh, in a cup. <laughs> one of those. Uh, one of those bras that they tried convincing men to wear exactly to nurse the baby i was like not happening not happening you know but um but I, <laughs> no i mean I, it would be nice i mean it would be nice to come back and 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 just you know just have a, a, yeah a nice boob to suck on and some comfort and no worries and like you know i mean it would be nice but uh and i'd pretty much convinced that yeah i'm just gonna rot in a hole in the ground so but do you think do you think is that you have that look the tony soprano look at the end of life it just goes to black or do you think that there's an open chance are you a religious guy no no i no. i mean i believe i believe in 
if I, do I didn't, believe, I didn't mean to put that on you. That's like a weird no, 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 question no. for mean, some people. I'm hedging my bets because you just never know. Right. You know, and it's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doubting the existence of any being because if I'm as clever as it gets, there's nothing. <laughs> there's, there's, let Truly me tell you something. Out you there. are an absolute you know? genius compared to what's going on right now. I just, you know, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to get by, man. I swear. I okay, now, as someone, you, you grew up, you, and like, you get your break in show business, right? Right. And you took the ball and just ran and ran and ran, and you just kept going and going and going. But it was, then, I didn't know. I didn't take it. I, it, it. I tried so hard, but every door I knocked on wouldn't open. But then out of nowhere, something happened, and that's what they say luck is when opportunity and preparedness meet. Yes. And, and I somehow got in a Richard Pryor movie. Before that, Rodney Dangerfield put me on a young comedian special. Yeah. But um, And then... I got this morning show and then I got fired and I thought my career was over and then I was on full house and then people went, wait, you're not doing your stand-up character. What have you become? So I'm like, I'm becoming successful. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah. I want And I want to entertain right. families. I'm watching your Christmas album video, a uh, uh, prom- preview, and I'm going, well, this is for everybody. This is like... Yeah. I don't think you've done that before where you I I haven't but it was like you know what I was like I really really felt this when I came back here and I live in this little tiny town in New Jersey and and the mayor reached out to me and she's like hey you know uh we're doing this we love local thing and you know can you play a few songs on your front porch and like you know I'm like yeah man let's do it and uh you know we're gonna get together and do some more stuff but it's like this is gonna be a hard year for a lot of people and i felt like look if i'm able to take the piss out of myself a little bit and it just makes people feel better i'm all for it i'm all for it I, yeah I, I don't have that much narcissism in me i mean obviously there's a uh, some narcissism in me because i get up on stage and i want people to clap you know and we all want people to love everything we do but it's it's not realistic I also understand it's not realistic and I can't take myself too seriously because if if I do, I'm just setting myself up for ridicule, you know? So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make fun of myself before other people make fun of me. That's what, that's what Ronnie Dangerfield always told me. He says, make fun of yourself, man. Then you can make fun of them, but just make fun of yourself. I was just going to ask you, what was he like? You had a relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he was really, um, he loved to smoke pot every day. Um, he, I love it, man. It keeps me alive. <laughs> There's nothing without it. And he, he was, um, you know, he thought, I, I remember I was real depressed and I went to his, uh, he lived at the penthouse of the Hilton in Beverly Hills. No way. Wow. And, yep. And he would wear shorts and his balls were hanging out and he didn't care. <laughs> and he had an open shirt. With it showed his big open scar from where they took out his they took out my guts and put them back in, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, Rodney, I've I'm not appreciating where I'm at. I've got this family show and I'm doing this video show and they're both really popular, but I don't feel like I'm getting all my comedy out. And yeah. he went, you know what, man, you don't know cock. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant. It meant anything, but right. it was just funny to hear. You don't know yeah. cock, That's <laughs> especially coming from that one of the yeah. greats, right? One of the greatest of the greatest of all time. Yeah, you know what I do some nights. I'll, I'll like I'll um, I'll go on YouTube and I'll like try to watch an old Dick Cavett show or or an old Mike Douglas show or whatever. But the best ones I I always type in Rodney Dangerfield. On Johnny Carson. Yep. And it is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. That like the 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 innuendo, you know, that's going on there. It's just so good, man. And that's what like, he told me. Everyone he hits every <clears throat> ball out of the park. Every joke is a is a ball over the fence. That's the intention. Yeah. yeah. I mean, God, I love him. I love him. And I just love I love uh I love 
sitting there watching him engage with other people, you know, like there's this back and forth going on. And Johnny Carson was, did you ever meet Johnny Carson? I was on the show a lot. I was on the show wow. with Johnny See, thir- that's 13 times. Deal. Yeah, it was, there was times. A, yeah. And he, like he, that's when Johnny Carson for, can you tell the younger members of your audience what it meant? Johnny Carson was Johnny a Carson? big star. Yeah. <laughs> if there were three channels, it wasn't even Fox. Um, yeah. Fox had just started. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I think Fox was happening. Yes, it was because I was on Arsenio also at the same time. But but Carson was the the end all for a comedian. And that's right now. It's in the Comedy Store special on Showtime that my friend Mike Binder made. There's a lot of talk of that. That's what mm-hmm. you strived to get to, right? Uh, um, I guess it was like being on the Midnight Special back in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or being now, on let me Johnny ask Carson. You this. Now, when the I think the the uh, stamp of approval was when he invited you over to the couch, right? Right. But I never yeah. did stand up on there because they all knew that my stand up wasn't appropriate for the show. I couldn't help it, even when I was looking like a clean cut dental assistant. I, and it, <laughs> I always looked like an accountant, you know? Yeah. Uh, they just, it was too weird. I'd have weird jokes and, you know. Yeah. My mom never let me go to camp because she thought I'd get embarrassed undressing in front of little boys, but I've changed because I kind of <laughs> like it now. And then, and then I go, that's not true. I'm not a senator. And that was, I said, but that, and, and I, I just put that on Instagram because that was from the Rodney special. And they, they said, you can't do that. But they, they had me, once I got on TV, mm-hmm. then Rodney would have you on as a guest. And, yeah, and the yeah. best thing that happened with him was he would say to me, um, I'd say to him, uh, "This story's this story's true," and he'd go, he'd go, "I don't care, just tell it." <laughs> It'd be like your uncle just, being intolerant with you, right? Yeah, I mean, that must have been that must have been amazing because that that was like, like, I mean, you sort of you're like you're in a, you're at an age where you got to see the greats at the end of their careers, but nonetheless. You got to see these incredible, the guys that sort of crafted whatever, what came after. I mean, yeah, you know, just really. I met people that you came. you were in a f- Richard Pryor movie, right? Yeah. So I got to be, I was friends with Richard. What? So, I mean, when you're, when you're looking at Richard Pryor, I mean, that, that guy, Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, who else was in there that, that like was really oh, pushing the envelope? With Tom, George Carlin. George Carlin. Um, I was supposed to go to lunch with him, and uh, two weeks later he passed away. So yeah. um, I actually wrote in my book, don't schedule lunch with me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but but any, anything I say like that, I know he would have laughed at that. But he, yeah. was a, he was a prophet of sorts, you know? Yeah. And yeah, angry. I mean, angry. Mm-hmm. But with good reason. I mean, I'm like, we need... Carson, I mean, uh, we need George Carlin now. Right. You well, know? Uh, Chappelle's yeah. doing it. Chris Rock's doing it. Bill Burr's mm-hmm. doing it. There's yeah. people doing it. They're they're pointing out the stuff, and you're going, wait a minute, the the joke's not there yet. Burr's like, Burr's like a fighter. You know, it's going to score. You know, there's yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. But but Dave and Chris will take a lot of time explaining uh-huh. what the point of what they're saying is. I just. I just look up to them a lot of how they yeah. do it, but let me let's take a quick break because I I was supposed to take one and I forgot because I'm so excited. So we'll be right back, okay? Because there's the people that want to sell something that I want to sell. Cool. What are you selling? Oh, you'll hear. Okay. <laughs> What's one of the most important things in your life? Yes, your family, your kids, your loved one, yourself, whatever, but uh, sleep. And a lot of us don't get enough, and it's not restful. And I need a good mattress. That's what I need. Sometimes I'll take like six of them, pile them up, and put a pee on the bottom, uh, just a little teeny pee, and then I'll see if I can feel it. And normally I can't because the mattresses, they suck. But I'm going to talk to you about a great, great mattress, one that I have experience with. And it's Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preference to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else, right? 
With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses if you're Goldilocks. They have mattresses great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. I do that. And even a Helix Plus mattress for your plus-size folks. I took the Helix quiz and I was matched with the perfect mattress for my daughter. I had to get it for my daughter because she needed something that felt medium and she slept on her side sometimes, sometimes on her back. But I was on the phone with her and we did this quiz and it works for her. She really loves it. She had it delivered. It was easy. It was, she loves it. I'm telling you, when your kid sleeps, you sleep. It's also awesome getting unboxing videos from so many of you who have also found the Helix mattress of your dreams. So if you're looking for a mattress, just take the quiz and then you order the mattress that you're matched to and the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. Helix is awesome, but don't take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Bob, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. You will. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Bob. That's helixsleep.com slash Bob. You need it again? Of course you do. helixsleep.com slash Bob. Take the quiz. Get the mattress. It's so easy, and you're going to sleep well. We're back. That was it. Isn't this great? Good stuff. Go buy two. Go by two of everything. Okay, so I wanted to go back to you because that's you know, what this is supposed to be about, but I talk too much, which is why I have a podcast. Yeah, but you're fun to listen to. Oh, you're nice. Yeah. Well, you're fun to listen to. I'll tell you why. You have what I believe, and I think Robbie has it too, but you have perfect pitch, period. You just have perfect pitch. Have you ever found yourself, do you ever go, wow, I sang that flat? Or yes. You have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's because you have perfect pitch. So, you know, if it, is that fatigue that would cause that? Yeah. Or just, yeah. A, a, and bad monitors? Used to, yeah, bad monitors. Used to be hangover, a lot of hangovers. Right. But, um, yeah, you know, just sometimes it's fatigue. You know, you get tired singing every night. And then, uh, but that, that's when I started taking vocal lessons because it was really important. I, I was going to ask you because you use your voice every night. Do you, right. Have you ever studied with somebody to say just well, survival skills? I've just, I did it accidentally because of, uh, I'm allowed to talk about it because it aired, but I was, I signed NDAs. I was on the mass singer. I was in one of those. Uh, no way. Yeah. You, you <laughs> could check it out on the thing. Yeah. My it's, wife it's, tortures um, me with that shit all the time. Oh, it is. It, and, I and hate I, that show. <laughs> I, I said I would never do it. And, yeah. and then, then uh, quarantine happened. And I'm friends with everybody on it. Robin Thickson, a friend I knew him since he was a kid. His dad was Alan, mm-hmm. who I loved, and and Ken Jong's the best. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they said, "Do you want to do it?" And I went, "Yes." <laughs> it was so yeah. weird. It was so strange. Um, and and I did one. I can't believe I didn't keep going because I I found good pitch. I, I I'm told I have relative pitch, not perfect pitch. And John Mayer was saying, "You don't have you don't have perfect perfect pitches." If says if someone says, "Sing a D," yeah, and I I guess it's, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Okay. I don't have perfect pitch. I don't have perfect pitch. I have relative pitch. I guess would be the term. All right. Well, you're better you than know. me for God's sakes. But I but was I gotta, good. You know, but I, I trained. Practice. I trained and I learned from the vocal coach there because I got a giant costume on, like a diving bell for a head. <laughs> it was squiggly monster. It was really, really it. I didn't want to lose, but I really wanted to get out of the fucking costume, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah but I could see but that. she was training me, and it was like doing all that <laughs> all that shit that you do just in your throat, just yeah. to open up your throat because that's what goes. Yeah, that's what goes. Yeah, 
it's weird. It's weird, but it works. You know, it works. And you, you it know, really does. I never knew it. I did a Broadway play, and I lost my voice a couple times. Yeah. And nobody. I should have worked with a co- vocal coach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it it was, takes a lot to keep it, keep it, keep it going. But you know, and that was the other thing. I quit smoking cigarettes because I was like, I started smoking when I was thirteen. I was I was up to I was up to two and a half packs a day by the time I was a sophomore in high school. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Oh my God. So I had to quit. I don't get to do anything, man. I got nothing. <laughs> well, you run I around got, naked. You, you don't I, run around naked. Your kid no, runs you I'm not scream naked. with no, your kid. Could you imagine the, the FedEx guy comes and there's a little girl <laughs> screaming and I'm running around chasing her naked? No. Yeah, no. you don't want to answer the door naked for yeah. right. No, but it, and yeah, I got, I got nothing, man. I got nothing. They're like, you must have an awesome, like home studio and stuff. It's like, no, man, I go down. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not even playing around. I go down in the basement with my iPhone after everyone's asleep. Cause I got a house full of people. And after everybody's asleep and I turn the recorder on my iPhone, I sit on a box playing an acoustic guitar and just, and you know, and I'm like, okay, great. That's a good idea. Well, that's not such a great idea, or whatever. I do, but, I do that. You know, I, yeah. I, I do that, but most of my ideas suck. Yours are amazing. No, but you got to get a thousand ideas to get a good one. It's the same thing. Writing a joke, writing a song. It's like it's the same thing, man. It's well, like, it, it is. It yeah. is if you write the best joke, but a music transcends, and every comedian will tell you that. Yeah, they can, you can have a comedian, they and people will say that's the best special ever made. You know, mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy's Raw. Or or Richard Pryor uh, on the Sunset Strip or mm-hmm. whatever you want to say is your favorite, you know Chappelle's yeah. last two that Netflix sticks specials. And stones. Sticks and Ooh. Stones was a different. Yeah, it's, it that was a that was a guy on a pulpit. You know, that was a guy telling it like it was at that moment. That's why I want to wait till I get out to do the special, but I want to do it. I was supposed to do it this year, but I want to do it next year. I was already doing stuff about racial tension because I was touring and I was hearing it from my audience and, and yeah. mean shit. And I would be like, I would take on that dad who uses, is not afraid to use whatever feels right language wise. I don't go out and curse for the hell of it. I do it because I'm, I'm a craftsman when it comes to cursing. Well, you know? I think, I think, um, I think that cursing, you, yeah, you are a craftsman with the cursing. Uh, it's easy to attach a fuck, fucking fuck, fucking fuck to anything. I did that cheap, once in a special, you know? but I did it as like a rim shot. I didn't even mean to. <laughs> I was at but, NYU and it was called That Ain't Right. And I just kept, you know, it's when you use it as a verb is yeah. when it's a problem, you know. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's, it's just too much of it is like, hey, it's gratuitous. But yes. You, it is your medium. You, it's like I, I can do it, or I can use it do like it. a painter. You know, you do. Like, it's, it, I use it's it like awesome. a fucking painter. Yeah, usually like a fucking but, but wise this, ass. But this is what you know when when lightning strikes. Like, okay, I read that the. I don't know if it was the director or the producer of City of Angels called you and said, "Would you write the theme song?" which is one of my favorite songs ever written on the earth, which is Iris, which yeah. hits you right in the solar plexus, no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, how, who, who contacted you and, and how long did it take? Did the tune start coming right into your head? Did something happen magical with that? Well, you know, what's interesting was uh, the, the, um, the music supervisor was a guy named Danny Bramson who was, one of the people who was really involved in um, at Warner Brothers, but he also was heavily involved with um, the Universal Amphitheater, which was a great place, you know, yeah. like getting shows in there. And he was involved in that somehow. Real interesting guy, seen everything. Once again, one of the old timers that's not there anymore. We were kids and we had these great icons of the music business yeah. at our disposal. We could call them, you know, and now, eh. Not to, but anyway, back to that. No, my you're subject, right. You're right. My subject matter was right in front of me. I got to watch the movie. And then and then the question was, what would I say to Meg Ryan? You know, if or what would I say if I was this guy, you know, who's immortal? And and all he, he wants, he's OK with the idea of putting up with all the bullshit of being human just to get a piece of that. 
<laughs> since she was, you know, but it, it was just, I, it was easy. It was that, I swear. And I'm not being arrogant to say that. It was, that song just came whoop down and through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally like just, do. I could, I knew that's what you were going to say. Because even in the music video where you're spinning around in that Jules Verne like observatory thing with the telescope and spinning around and showing clips from the movie, I remember it so vividly. It hit me so hard. And you even let me put it in my penguin, my dirty penguin movie. I love that, man. You've been so I kind to me. But no. that's that song is just it's a that and I think we share this, which is you're a romantic. You yeah. you yeah. So I'm a romantic, so I love love. And yeah. and that song is, that's why you're so special because you're able to put that into your work and then it gets shared with the world. I mean, that's, that's, not, um, that's not what most people experience. Get, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it was like you were saying before, you know, luck. What is it? Luck is opp where opportunity and preparedness meet. Right. And, and the other one that I love is uh, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah, you know? absolutely true. And yeah. you're, you had, I, I know, I know this about you from already knowing you a bit, which is you have, you have what I had, which was from my, I learned from my dad a lot because he had to raise the whole family during the depression before I was born, his family, wow. but um, the work ethic, it's a strong yeah. work ethic. I mean, before um name came out you were still you were you had albums but you were still working in, in yeah. job right yeah we were just well, i was working a day job until name came out the fifth the fifth album and and um until that song started getting played on the radio i was still yeah working in a bar you know and uh and i loved it I love working in bars. I, I would love to be a bartender just for fun now. Still? I would love it. It was the best job. It was the best job for <laughs> a, like like a 26, 27-year-old guy. Right. Because it's like you leave the bar every night with a bottle of booze, a girl, and two pockets full of cash. And it's just – and it's the best. You know? <laughs> it's the greatest job ever. I didn't you know? get that from being a deli clerk. I would leave with a quarter pound of corned beef and a smoked fish, you know? <laughs> Wait, where did you, you know, grow up? Where, do, where I did grew you up, grow up? I was born in Philly, and then I moved okay. to Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, wow. And then wow. Encino at 14. I moved so much I didn't hold on to friends that long, but I valued the ones I had. And then I graduated high school, 12th grade, back in Philly, and then went to Temple University. Were you oh. Buffalo the whole time? I was. I grew up in Buffalo. Lived there until my wife and I split up. And and I I I honestly I looked at a map, and I was just like, "What's the furthest I can get away from this situation geographically, um, where I know some people?" And then it was. I mean, it was Los Angeles. Everyone I knew was living in Los Angeles. So right. Um, so so I went out there. Like a lot of people from Buffalo, they they run away. And then they, and then you come back and I, I'm, I'm up there all the time to see my sisters because my whole family still lives there. Right. And, um, but, but, you know, I mean, there's times I want to go back, you know, really bad. I mean, as I've gotten older, I'm just like the things that I was like, ugh, about, uh, growing up there. I, I really long for now. It's kind of strange, you know? No, it's just interesting. One... I want to go back to Philly, too. I want yeah. to go back there. And, you know, it has something to do with this crazy year that we've all been through and this election. And, wow, Philly and Detroit, these are cities that I go, that you go to, I go to. I've, yeah. I've been to, you've done what I've done, but maybe more because you, absolutely more. You've been all over the world. I've done a couple countries outside of here, but pretty much I've been to every city in the u.s every state obviously um and i feel a kinship especially the ones that i'm from but i spent so much time in detroit and and toronto and vancouver and and mm -hmm. um and new jersey my god and florida i feel like i'm from all these places so i sure uh, you know and you go and you know exactly where did you ever stay in was it cleveland that had swingos that was in um almost famous um, that hotel swingos it was the one that that in, in Almost Famous, they go into this hotel 
which still existed when I started playing Cleveland. I think it was Cleveland, but it looked like all the pop art of Andy Warhol kind of stuff everywhere. Oh, wow. Cool. I you, probably. You, I, I think know. you did. You must have been. <laughs> I'm sure I did. Yeah, you were, you were. I don't really. I'm like, oh, well, I get. Because we travel on a bus. So right. we, we, we drive all night. And you know what's crazy about it? After all these years, I mean, we used to travel in a van. Everybody. You know, there, then it went up to a van and a trailer, then two <laughs> vans and two trailers. And then we finally got a bus, you know, and that was, so we traveled by bus at night and then you pull into a city at five in the morning, they wake you up. Um, and then you go into a hotel room and I'm like, literally, I'm like, I, I don't even remember half of them because yeah, just- I, I've done that. I'm, I'll go to a place. I get there at five in the morning. I'll take a flight at 4 a.m., some yeah. crazy, the earliest flight, and then you sleep for, wake me at 2, and then get me to the sound check. Yeah. What about, all, you have like 90 guitars, something insane, like every good yeah. uh, rock musician. That's on a, that's on the giant truck that comes yeah. separate with all the gear, and then all the roadies, they have their own plan to get there when they do it? <laughs> no. no, well, you know, they, you know, I love those guys, and that that was one of the things um, that I wanted to talk about was was there's 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 um there's a lot of different uh, places where you can go make a donation for for these guys that uh, that work in the entertainment field, but they're not the people doing the shows. They're the people that put the shows on and and make sure the lights work and and do all this stuff like our crew. Um, you know, I mean, we, we thank God we're blessed. We can, we can, you know, help them out, you know, I mean, not help them out, but we can keep them on with us, you know, throughout this rough time, you know, because, because I'm like a Polak from Buffalo and I'm like, someday there's not going to be, there's going to be a rainy day, but we got to <laughs> put away a little bit of money. So it hurts a little all the time. <laughs> this we'll is that be, day. So and this was this day. So we were lucky that we saved some cash, you know? I mean, is there a used. website for them? Is there something? There's, um, I, it was, I did it a bit ago and then it, I think it's a uh, crew crew nation. Yes. Crew nation. And then there's one, uh, there's also one called for the nomads. Um, you know, and 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 they're great. These people, if if it weren't for all those people and the crew guys and everything, I, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do anything, you know. Because once, you know, and 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 there's no other work, you know. I'm mean, just like I know about a guy who, I know a guy who who, uh, you know, he's he's working at a Home Depot now, you know, and he was he was working in a in a very big successful situation. Now he's like, now he's working at a Home Depot. And well, it's like, what, what, fuck, what, this what, what you hope is that next year he can get back in and by the, by the fall, things will start to come back up. Yeah. I think, I think I'm going to plan for the fall more than that's, the summer. That's, that's what think. I'm planning for. I've got some yeah. summer stuff sitting there, but I don't think it's, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we, I want to know that I'm not getting people sick. Because they're there, yeah. and some refuse to be uh, inoculated, <laughs> and then they—it's yeah. yeah. weird. It's like I—I'm I, so sad about it, but then there's something good that's going to come out of this. There's something. Absolutely. There's human connection that's coming out of this that is not that does not come out of our normal life of everything's just going as normal. Yeah. Well, I think. I mean, I think that 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 ever since you know the internet started getting big and then iphones it's just i feel this like the fabric is being separated you know and and you know i I live uh i live with a couple of teenage girls here you know i mean my wife's nieces and uh and her mom and and you know sometimes sometimes it's like hey hey get rid of the phone for a few minutes let's talk yeah yeah. You know, and I'm just like, fuck, I'm an old man. I just want to sit here and talk, you know? Well, that's not an old man. That would be like a therapist, too. I mean, when you think about it, that would be someone that's, you can't just, and I'm on my phone a lot, and my wife's yeah, on her too. phone a lot. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we just go phones down and or put them in the other room 
and just yeah. leave them in there. And it's real weird when we're conditioned and the phone's in the other room. Sometimes it's like, you know, it's you my the, life. Uh, my <laughs> that comes out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Your top professional bucket list would be to play Bob O'Reilly with Pete Townsend, right? Yeah. That's accurate. Can you imagine that? He'd I probably saw be them. like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, it's weird. Uh, he, I met him and he didn't want to meet me, but when he did, he committed to it. Right. And I said, you know, you've just affected my life so much. And, and it was at a group thing where he comes back up and sees people. And I knew a lot of the people and mm-hmm. some of them work with him. And then he started talking to me and, and, and he went, no, I know who you are. Yeah. And then I was hoping it's kind of like your sting experience. I was hoping for him to go, well, Oh, you're very funny. You know, but I didn't get that. But yeah. then he started to talk to me. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was engaging. And then I got yeah. pictures and I was like, wow, we look like each other, but that's meeting. Sometimes it's a bucket list. Yeah. I've been on stage with some people. What's, what's your favorite on stage experience? Is there something that comes to mind or is it a sh- particular show where you go, Holy fuck. I never thought we'd play here. I, well, uh, yeah, well we played at Madison square garden. Um, right after 9-11, that concert for Heroes. And, oh, God. And then I was like, wow, I got to meet Elton John. I got to, I got to, uh, you know, see the, see the who. I got to, you know, um, I got to see Bon Jovi there. And, you know. Um, did you play with Bon Jovi? We did. Well, I didn't play with them at that thing. We, we uh, opened for them. Um and we did a whole tour with them and it was, it was really fantastic. I, I like, like John, John runs his band, like a football team, you know, like it's, it's awesome, man. That guy. And I told him, I was like, man, if my manager ever dies, I want you to be my manager. And he's like, <laughs> I want 25%. And I'm like, fine with me, man. But, um, he, but he was, he was just really generous. And he, and he last year, <clears throat> right before all of this, covid stuff happened he uh we we got the opportunity to open for them in south america which is like every night was like a hundred thousand people oh man it was and i and i had to thank him i'm just like dude you you did my band a solid because we've been trying to get down to south america forever Mm -hmm. and he he helped us kick the door open and then Uh, and then covid (laughs) so that's so fucked it's so fucked yeah, because they also the whole world knows your songs and that's and so they get to put a, a face and see the performance and your shows are so awesome. I mean, I mean, 10 songs. I'm just going to say titles just because there might be a couple people here that I'm just going to I'm going to slide. Everybody knows slide. Iris sympathy to me is a song that makes me cry. Sympath- ah. Sympathy is a kind of a mantra for me. There was a time when I when I lost um, my dad. I played it on a loop for 24 hours. Wow. I take these things so I don't feel. Don't you hate when people give you your lyrics back to you? Yeah. No, no, uh, I don't. No, no, because it's it's meaningful at that point, you know? That is such a beautifully written piece. It's just pure poetry. Thank you. Look look at you, though. You write, but you write poetry, and then you write music to it, and that's the greatest artist to me. For me, it's what I like well, all kinds of music. You. I can like all of it. You know, there's yeah, many, many there's great music in every genre, yeah, every single genre, like crazy music. I mean, I hadn't yeah. watched Eight Mile. I watched it the other night. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, it's actually. And, and then you realize that he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest rapper. Well, it's hard because yeah. there's so many great rappers. But yeah. But the thing about that movie, too, was it was really engaging. Like, it was a great story. I yeah. Like, I, most rock and roll, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta see the Def Leppard movie, you know, where it was like, I don't, I can't remember, but whoever was playing the producer is just classic. You know, and it, it, it's, it, I think it was a VH1 movie. So, right. you know, it, it was going to suck from the get go, but going in, knowing it was going to suck and it was a VH1 movie. It was really fun. It was really fun. The, the, the people don't really, understand they, they they think it's 
glamorous and shit. And it's just, it's hard work, but there's also, I mean, you were saying, you know, Tom Petty and what that, what he was. And now we just lost Eddie Van Halen, which is, that just hits you in the heart. Yeah. You know, um, my uh, my engineer that works with me in the studio all the time, he lives in Eddie Van Halen's boyhood home in Pasadena. And like he sends me pictures and calls me and tells me all the crazy stuff that people are leaving there. That guy caused a seriously caused a paradigm shift in music yeah. that, that, that I mean, you know, and I got I got into an argument with somebody about this. I said, you know, Eddie Van Halen was an amazing guitar player. And why was he? But but he was a great songwriter and a great singer. And he was an inventor. Like he was an inventor. He changed the actual physical structure of of what you did to get a sound, you yeah. know, and and he should be revered by all musicians, you know, for what? for leaving the world a little better off than he found it, you know? But I have a thing where I'm just like, ah, he inspired a lot of bad guitar playing in the eighties, but, <laughs> but it was like, because it was, it was cheap imitations of what he just did naturally that just flowed from him, you know? Yeah, and, and, we're, and how he was, was a great songwriter. Right. I know. Um, well, we're, I want, I'm not done talking to you, but we have to take one more break. I don't think it's about trimming my balls, but sometimes there is, I do have that. Uh, do you, do you, are you, you manscaped? They got, are you, are you I'm telling a, me you're I talk the about, manscaper? I will. I believe in it. I don't think, because I don't want to snag myself on a drawer in the middle of the night. <laughs> what if you're What if you're running around in your room naked and all of a sudden. And I you, step on my ball hair. Right. Or it's getting, we're getting older. It's Christmas time. You got the Christmas tree. What if you walk by and an ornament, the little, the little paper clip gets caught. Next thing you know, you got, you got crystal. You got uh, what do you got? Silver balls. It's silver balls. <laughs> we're gonna be right back. Here's something you can all relate to. If you can afford it, if you're able to, you shop online. And we've all seen that promo code field, and it just taunts us. It taunts us at checkout. I don't have a promo code. What do I do? But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons and can find them right from that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. What did Honey save you money on? It saved me money on clothes. It saved me money on some gadgets I buy. I like gadgets. Thanks to Honey, I was able to save, I think it was like eight bucks on a pizza. And that's significant. Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. And if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Bob. That's joinhoney.com slash Bob. Okay, we're back. We're, we're back because that's what we do. I got to name more of your songs. Black Balloon. I knew a girl yeah. that was in the Black Balloon video and she got cut out and she was crying. No. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was a long wow. time ago. Uh, uh, but. Damn. <laughs> I didn't want to make I, you feel bad. I don't edit. <laughs> no, I know. Broadway. God damn. You have so many songs. Damn. Oh, Let Love In is so... All, everything. I mean, there's no Stay With You, Better Days, Naked, Boxes, big, acu Acoustic Number 3. There it is. Um, So that's your favorite of yours? Acoustic Number 3? 
that's my daughter's favorite and I can't figure it out because it's such a morbid song you know and yeah like, you know and and uh but I love that but, you write stuff like that yeah I like being I like being miserable you know it's kind of it's 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 a little tough w- once you have this magic little person running around you know because it's like shit I could hang out with her all and I do now I hang out right. with her all day long and just listen to her tell some tell the craziest stories and just do the wildest shit. And I'm like, I will never break you, man. You know, the world's going to try to break you, but I won't, you know? Well, and, she's um, probably, would you say she's one of the best things besides your wife that has happened to you? Cause it's such positive better. energy. Better. I mean, you know, I mean, best equal. Equal. Yeah, see, that's we go a hard back one. and erase that. <laughs> then, we go right? back and erase that. It's Just, supposed to I be. I never said that. <laughs> your partner and then the child. That's what it's yeah, supposed to I, be. I, I think so, but I mean, I, I mean, it's hard with kids because they are. I have three daughters, and uh-huh. I used to bring them to all your shows. That you know, uh, they 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 sing. Ch- kids really, your music really hits home with kids. Always has. Have you noticed it because of your concerts? Yeah, it makes me feel a little weird because I like to, you know, I like to work a little blue. You know? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you <laughs> and, do. Uh, and then I feel bad, like, oh, shit. Uh, this is the first time that four-year-old heard motherfucker. You know, it's like, right. Uh, but, you Well, know. probably their father is one. Yeah, <laughs> at least once. <laughs> yeah. You got to remember that. That's the rule. That's, that's Every, fine. Everybody's I mean, mom has gotten fucked once, at least. I think you know? twice if, if you, to make a kid. So you got to double down. You can't just think it'll happen. But yeah. sometimes, like you wrote Iris, it just happens the first time, and that's it. Yeah, I see. And my, my wife and I talked about that because it was like, you know, it took took a while before we we got pregnant, and it was like, and I was just like, I'm telling you right now, we got to get broke fast, and then we'll have five kids because. Everybody poor winds up with five kids. My old man, <laughs> my old man was drunk all the time and, and didn't have a pot to piss in, but he managed to knock my mother up five times and, I, and they hated each other. Well, that's how they saying, got that's that can fuel sex. Actually. It's just a lot of grudge fucking going yeah. on. There. <laughs> it's just, it's not good it, for you. I mean, it's Yeah. It was, I mean, it was I told this. For any of us. I told this story the other day, and I I told my wife that I had shared it, and I I think it. I'm trying to think who I shared it with. It might have been Mark Marin. I'm not sure, but um, we were on the couch, and she was being playful and pulling like little feathers out of the pillows, and she she threw them at me. But uh, you know, I'm a comedian. It's like if you do something to me, I'm gonna do it ten times back. Yeah, you know, I'm a rough guy <clears throat> to fuck with. You know. Uh, Absolutely. and so then I started taking, there were crackers there cause she put out some crackers and some cheese and I started to crumble the crackers up and I put it down her blouse. <laughs> I mean, that, that's not like feathers. That's much, no. that's almost abusive. Yeah. But don't, don't fuck with a pro. But I, but I, exactly. But I yeah. did it slow. It wasn't like an aggressive, <laughs> violent move. It was just like gingerly making breadcrumbs. And then. I went and I got the dust buster and then I cleaned it all up and I, <laughs> I back. I said, take your shirt off. Let me help you. Let me did vacuum. Did you vacuum your wife's I, I kind of did, but I didn't want to really touch areas I might go to. Uh, no. Not that it's all about me, but I didn't want to take a filthy <laughs> dust buster and touch her body with it. And so here I am, like my character in Full House, dust busting m- my wife with no shirt on. And then I put the dust buster down and, you know, we... Uh, yeah, she had, she had no shirt on. I mean, what are you going to do? That's that's love. That's love because I cleaned up first. That's right. <laughs> you know, that's love, man. You know, you can, you know, just it's it's amazing. I got I have one question I need to ask you because I always wanted to ask you this. What is the fucking best thing that you have ever hammered a heckler down with? Like where you just said, Oh man, I took that one too far. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I've done that before. I I have done things when so and the audience wants it, but I don't know yeah. what they're gonna want now because mm-hmm. when we go back um, and people are out to have a good time, my job, your job, what we want to do is give them the best fucking time they've ever gonna had. Bring it because they've been prisoners. They've been yes. hamsters in a habit trail cage. <laughs> 
and that's all of us. So, yeah. but I probably will pummel somebody. Somebody will yell out, you know, you're not funny. And then you usually go right to his mom, but then, <laughs> then you can go to his grandma and then and they you all get, died of COVID. <laughs> get all, you can you can throw that in. You oh. can go. Nobody's better than Bill Burr at this. That's how he started. I was yeah. with him. I was with him in in New Jersey at the. It was called the Tweeter Center, and it was yeah. like eight of us on the uh, the Opie and Anthony virus tour. And it was like Louis Black and Tracy Morgan and Robert Kelly and all these comedians were on this thing. Um, Louis C.K. did a couple of them. It was just all of us, all the East Coast guys and yeah. gals, but mostly it was a belligerent guy show, you know? And the audience in Philly was booing <laughs> Bill Burr, and he just annihilated them. He told, he just, you have to look, Google it, Bill Burr, Philly, heckling, whatever. And the oh, more shit. they boo him, he says, I'm doing every fucking minute of my 15 minutes. And then wow. he, would, he would go hammer, hammer. He just, hit them with how bad the flyers are the eagles are all this shit and he made fun of their cheesesteaks called them all fat and ugly and then (laughs) and then he would go okay i got 12 minutes left you know it it was just it mine was a guy stood up in cleveland i was just starting out too and he goes he stands up he's like eight feet tall he was like seven i think he's seven feet tall and he goes hey you're not funny i said what's your name he said sid and I said, well, sit down and shut the fuck up. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that's just, but he wrote it for me. I didn't, you know, he, I didn't have to do it. Yeah, anything. well, he, he lobbed you the softball. You just knocked like, it out of the park. You don't get heckled, you know? right? Oh, fuck yeah, I get heckled. What I used to they- keep, I used to keep a hundred dollar bill in my pocket. Like after we got, we, name had become a hit and, but we were still getting fucked with all the time. I mean, some genius put us on the same bill as corn. So it was like, oh my god! They were burning. They were burning chairs and throwing them at the stage. It was it was unbelievable. And um, I used to keep a hundred dollar bill in my pocket because there was always that one guy that we, that did not want to be there and was like flipping me off. And, and I'm just like, why? Why the fuck are you here? You know why? Why? Why are you here? Oh, my girlfriend made me come. Well, I'm like, here, here's your money back, bro. Just. And just throw the money off the stage at us. Take right. the fucking money. Just and just leave. Go go stand outside and drink a hundred dollars worth of beer. On me. That's just smart. Don't, because I'm just I can't I I see the you know what I mean? I see the worst. I focus on that one guy. There's nine hundred and ninety-nine people there and the thousandth one you know is the, the I have the same thing I don't yeah. have the money in my pocket because I'm just too cheap a motherfucker and <laughs> I like to travel light so maybe a yeah. chapstick in the left and then a pocket of picks <laughs> picks in the right pocket nice so uh, when I get a guy that uh, it's always a guy I've never this is a lady has never done this to me ever no no me either. Um, one time actually one time in Berkeley someone f- said I was being misogynistic and then I just went off and said no I'm not I'm not these are jokes uh, I I am more sympathetic I have you know and then I had explained myself mm. because I felt really bad I said I got daughters I've got I, well I got an ex-wife I got a mother I mean I I make this is a, a, a jokes I'm making and I'm sorry if you find them offensive and yada yada right and and then I said please I'm I'm so happy to give you your money back and she didn't want to leave she wanted to fight and then I found Mm. out that she wanted to come backstage afterward because she was drunk and supposedly had a crush on me and was wanted to do that it was a ploy didn't know I would have crumbled some crackers (laughs) it was a ploy but yeah you know yeah! Wow, that's amazing. But I've had I've had people ask people to leave, and yeah. and get their money. Of course, fights break out, security, all that yeah. shits happened. Yeah, I have yeah. to have more security than a lot of other people because I end up doing music at the end of my show. But I mean, with your show, I mean it's it's rock and roll. No matter how you look at it, that's yeah. what it is. But you're listed as alternative. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I know it's the algorithm is like me, Matchbox 20, and Lifehouse. It's just, and John Mayer. And I'm like, well, how do I fit into this situation? But right. I get it. I get it. Well, it's but. you. It's just your stuff. It's just, <sighs> how old were you when you picked up a guitar? Uh, 12. 
You, know? you take lessons or you just started going? Nah, I just started going for it. Because I had a buddy down the street who was a couple years older than me. So he would show me stuff, you know, and um, and as soon as I learned three chords, it was just, it was crazy because it was like, you know, you're a freshman in high school. Yeah, yeah, for a while. And, and then freshman in high school. And then, um, and then we would play in my dad's living room and then girls would come over. It was like, <laughs> what? I'm doing this, man. And you're in Buffalo. I'm old enough to be a bartender. I'm doing this. Because it's all about trying to get girls. It's it's just, I'm convinced. Men, men, you know, Archimedes screw was invented because he was thinking about some girl. You know, just something. You know, everything. We're men. We, we're we obsessed, you know. Yep. Yeah. But that's true of people, too, that are, that are, Trying to get guys. I mean, there's, you know, you look at the groupies that I'm sure were thrown at Freddie Mercury. I mean, it, it it's it's strange. And I've had a lot of guys try to uh, get pick me. Pick you up? Pick me really? up, yeah. Yeah, in wow. the audience. I, would, I was in San Francisco, and some guy, I'd been messing with him in the audience, mm-hmm. and then he came up on stage, and there's no security, and he gets me in a headlock, and I took the mic and I shoved it up his ass. <laughs> and then he, yeah. and then, and then and the security really took good. took him away. He ran away when I did that because I guess wow. it was sensitive. And then I was like, "Oh no!" I actually screwed the. I took the. I took the windscreen off. <laughs> I took off the windscreen because I didn't want to be like having oh. his. I didn't want to go ass to mouth right after. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the first date. I mean, That's I just right. met him. Yeah, but, that's that's a little bold. But then you find out that you're. I mean, you've done so much good music. You got so much great shit to come. It's so. Uh, I'm just so happy that. Thank you. That I'm talking to you for one, and that I used to just look up to you. And your music is always on a loop in in part of my brain's playlist. Thank you. You know. You know what I want to do? I want to get together with you again. And let's let's. I mean, you're still doing your your benefit show, right? Absolutely. Yeah, let's I, we do just it did again. it. We oh, I'd love it. I'd lo- I'd be so honored. We'll That'd we're gonna so do great. it. We'll do it live in New York again, and we'll do it live in L.A. again once we're able to. We just did it virtually. I didn't mm-hmm. bug you on it because I figured I've tortured you enough. But you gave us a no. song. You gave us Iris for um our for the program for our mm-hmm. our main video for the mm-hmm. the opening video of all the years of doing the Sclerodema Research Foundation benefit and it mm-hmm. was just so kind of you guys to come to San Francisco for that that was above nah, and beyond I, I love it I got to meet I got to hang out with George Lopez he's he such a awesome. good man he was happy to hang Holy out with shit. you dude I was laughing my ass off I was just like just standing there in the hallway I'm like ah dude you're killing me Stop. he's the re- he's the real deal yeah, he's man. the real deal. I, mean, I, I, I met Tom Petty once. Um, Gary Shandling was close with Tom, and uh, and at that time I was over Gary's house, and I I was very young, and I walked over to Tom, and I, I walked up to him, and I just didn't know what to say, and I went, uh, you know, I just want to say, and he looked over his glasses, his tinted glasses, and he went, I know, man, I know. <laughs> I've never uh, I've met a lot of people since and nobody was that cool about yeah. you don't have to say anything and I know he'd yeah. done it before but it didn't matter because he was so present yeah what no, a no, special no. special guy yeah that that one yeah that hurt you know and what what I loved also about Tom Petty was like he he didn't reinvent himself but he kept growing like he, you know, he did the the first bit uh, of his career, you know, and it was like really cool, straight, like really just awesome songwriting, Dylan influence, kind of great rock and roll. Um, and then, and then he did Dave Stewart. I think "Don't Come Around Here No More" and right. all that. And then it had this very modern drum machine, synths, all this crazy stuff, but it was still petty and it was still great, and the whole world could still love it, you know. And then the stuff that he did with Jeff Lynn was brilliant. The Wilburys was like, 
Holy shit! Bit, yeah. Roy Orbison singing, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he's 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 singing a bridge. This yeah. is like insane. Yeah, and then and then he went on to work with Rick Rubin, and that was amazing too. And man, like and like and maintaining his cool the whole time. Right. Yeah? It's, it's so valuable awesome. to see. I don't know how you feel about him, but I was. It's. I really enjoyed watching the thing on. Um, HBO Bruce Springsteen's uh, latest um, album and oh, project. Western Skies or Stars? Yeah, I think yeah. So. I don't know what it was. Yeah, I I watched it. I watched it. I thought it was good. I loved. I thought it was really good. I love Bruce Springsteen. I love him more now than I did when I was a kid. Me you know? too. Me too. Like, and I've I become obsessed with him now because yeah. it, in that particular show. Um, it might have a different name. I could Google, but then I'd be a douche. Um, but John Landau, who produced so many records for so many years, yeah, he's yeah. sitting there, and it's near the end of the documentary, and he just starts crying because the song is so beautiful to him, and he sees all those years of them being together. That's when you were talking about where are those guys, the John Landau's, the guy that could come in, like yeah, Rick the Rubin. Seymour Steins. Right. Well, Rick Rubin is still here, thank God. So, yes. So, so is Dave Stewart, you know. But but I don't think people have vision like that anymore. I don't I don't think people who have vision like that uh, rise to the top of the the record industry anymore, because record companies should not be publicly traded entities. They need to be kept insulated and and uh, protected from market forces. You know, because that's how you're going to make great art. Look, you're trying to make money making art. And, that, you know, that's it's that's a difficult thing. But, you know, a guy like Seymour Stein, my God, man, you know, the Ramones and Depeche Mode and, and just all these bands. What a visionary, you know, and, and I don't see that anymore. You know? No, you don't. No. You don't. No. And I think a but lot of times, okay. but there a lot of the new people want to just do it on their own and they have a producer and mm -hmm. they don't want somebody coming in that is such a visionary. It's a, that's a big, another, you know, top of the food chain type of person to mess with your head. Yeah. So, well, it's a, it's interesting because the, um, the producers now are also the songwriter and the engineer in a lot of cases. Right. So it's like, you know, it's just kind of like I and Rob Cavalla was a producer. He produced all of our most commercially successful records. And and, um, you know, I could play him a song on an acoustic guitar and just mumble. Blah, 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 and he'd be like, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Let's do it. OK. <laughs> do you have Thank anybody you, you want to work with in that capacity <clears throat> that you haven't yet? Uh, producers, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to work with a guy like Dave Stewart. That'd be because he's an amazing songwriter as well as a, a a really sort of visionary producer. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, you'd have I mean, to reach out. Would, you'd have to reach well, out. Rick and... Rubin would be great, but I don't think he'd work. I don't think he would work with me. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't know. I, just, I, have an I, I think it all depends on what yeah. you're writing, what what the new stuff yeah. is. It really is it's, that, and it's always. Yeah, I don't good. know. I don't know if the new stuff is all that radio friendly, but it's it's pretty. It's cutting pretty close to the bone, you know. Um, so this new stuff is coming out of where you're, what you're feeling right now, right? Yeah, it's kind of like I mean, you know, and and it's in, in it's not political. It's not political, but but it's like I can't. I can't ignore the forces that are kind of ripping everything apart, Yeah, you know? And, and, you know, there was a question that I was really interested in asking you, which is, you know, because we used to play a ton of colleges, you know, and I don't want to go there. Me too. I don't yeah. want to go there anymore, but I never thought, and that was something that George Carlin, I saw him say, he goes, you're starting to get censorship from the left. He goes, now you got to worry. Because the right's always going to try to censor you. And, yeah. And, it's the far right the and the left, far left. Are the, yeah. They're they're going, you can't say <clears> that. And I'm like, it's a, it's a joke. Or they don't get irony. Or yeah. they don't get satire. 
Yeah. Because it's not meant for them. So what makes them laugh is often just someone, I hate saying them, it sounds terrible. What makes some people laugh that are young and cynical in their own way uh, and smart? They have, very a, they, smart. they're very smart. Uh, yeah. But they, it has to be a specific kind of comedy that they sanction. So right. it has to take down the man, you know, the, the establishment. And it has to be just, I think a lot of it, it's, there's not a lot of that. People don't want to hear about what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding. They don't, they don't understand. If John Lennon were to come out now with the message of everybody should love each other right now, yeah. I don't, it's very hard. I mean, look what happened with the actors that made that failed imagined uh, <laughs> video where they all tried to do that. We all went, oh no, this is a miss. You know the uh, the intent. I didn't see it. I didn't yeah, see it. it's gotten made fun of pretty bad. But I mean, it was a bunch of actors with coming from their hearts. But um, it's not done right. It has to be somebody that people really respect, and they can do it. And there are a few people that can do it. A few comedy yeah. people. But I mean, you have to not. You have to be fearless, really. And that's yeah. why I look at Dave Chappelle and how he's doing it, how Chris Rock's going to do it. I know he's going to come out with a new amazing hour and a half. And I think mm -hmm. you look at some of the, there's a lot of new people coming up and new voices. And it'll be interesting. Cause and who, are the, who are the new voices that you really love? That I really love? I mean, Or you like, at least like. I mean, Let me, yeah. I don't want to paint you into I mean, a I, There's something I like about uh, Mitch Mullaney because he's... Um, He's very articulate, and he has a. It's almost like a Steve Martin character type of thing that he's doing, which is old school, which I like. Yeah. Um, you know, it's there's people, a lot of people that are doing kind of what Zach Galifianakis did when he yeah. was doing stand up. So I like them, but the, the they come from him. They're his offspring, yeah. which is this kind of left of center, odd kind of comedy there's a, yeah. a group from uh london auntie donna who have a netflix show right now oh, they're cool. they're a rep company and they're youngish and completely bonkers i actually yeah. did their podcast once i really liked them I and mean, they're just they're crazy and they know what comedy is yeah um what's auntie what auntie donna auntie donna okay i'm gonna go check that out i'm enjoying a lot of british humor lately yeah, yeah. And British television. I'm obsessed with some of the new shows that are, they either have British people in them or I don't know what it is. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, what, are, what are you watching? What are you guys watching right now? You know, it's funny because I'm obsessed with British game shows. Oh, that's funny. So you're watching Jimmy Carr hosting? And Jimmy Carr is so funny. He's I'm really flying. funny. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's amazing. What's it like to spend a night with Jimmy Carr? Well, it's um, I did a thing. I hosted this nasty show at the at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival at the Place des Arts in Montreal, and uh, it was the dirty show, and it went out live all over television. And so I was the host, and Triumph, the insult comic dog Robert Smigel, and yep. Amy Schumer, Jimmy, Mike Ward, and Ben Folds, my friend, came on at the end. So um, Jimmy and I met and had an instant liking for each other with all of our incredibly <laughs> offensive humor, uh, stuff that you just can't do any of it. And yet, you know, uh, he still does it. He posts it on his Instagram, and it's funny as hell. He just yeah. It's dick joke after dick joke and and too young to talk about joke and all that. Yeah. So yeah. we became friends. We just hit it off, and it was a quick back and forth, rapid fire, inappropriateness. And he embarrassed me. I was like hosting and we had an all girl choir to sing backup for the Ben Fold song that I was to come out and sing with. And he kept saying things to them as it, like he's holding court about me saying like, <laughs> did you watch Bob on Full House? And they're like, yeah. And I went, oh, well, would you like to know some other things about him? And, you know, <laughs> he, he, it just terrible. It was horrible what he did to me, and he loved it. He just loved it, yeah. and I loved him. And so when I was in London, I uh, performed at the Leicester Square Theater, which is a really nice, sweet spot in the West mm -hmm. End. And uh, 
we went to lunch and he's just a he's been on this podcast he's a we actually had a very serious conversation sometimes when you get comedians together they're not silly and riffing i know i understand there's, there's i've met a, a few comedians um it was interesting because i was i was i was on politically incorrect right uh, once and um whoever was was a very well-known comedian at the time and he just looked like 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 he was like i thought he was like going to commit suicide and then he then he went out and he just killed it and um and i was just like what what just happened to this guy right like what what's going on and then but i know that that uh some humor comes out i mean it comes from the darkness man oh you so know? much and there's going to so be much. a lot of it and I think we're going to find some new stars that are silly. I think I'm going to get, I'm going to be sincere because I have a lot I want to say about this time. Like you were saying, what do you, are you going to deal with it? If, absolutely. Cause we've all shared this common experience all over the world and yeah. in different ways in different places. And I'll probably try to find a way that doesn't offend anybody and make, I don't know how you do that. I mean, how do you, you know, how many QAnon people are here tonight? You know, <laughs> I was I was just eating a baby in my pizza parlor downstairs. You know, <laughs> I'm not doing that shit. I don't think. I think that would that would start a ruckus. But yeah. <laughs> but I do. I do. I've, I've already got so much material. Uh, we all do. Everybody. We all, you yeah. do. We all do about what you were telling me. All the people in your home. I mean, that's that turns into 20 minutes. What we've been yeah. living. Yeah. We're living in a in a in a wind tunnel right now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but I, you know, silver linings, man, you know, oh, absolutely. I, I, I truly believe that like when we come out through the other side, you know, at that it's, it's going to be like, it's going to be intense, but there will be dancing in the streets and there will be, there will be great comedy shows to go to great rock concerts to go to. You can, actually go back to a movie theater whatever you know well you've just, been helping restaurants you've been doing a lot of stuff you just did a big thing recently for was it restaurants in buffalo um i i think it was in westfield the okay. stuff in westfield but i did stuff in, for buffalo and for westfield you know whatever we can get our hands up i keep doing so much stuff i lose track of what it no, is no i know i know i'm trying you to know? help every, everything i can from veterans yeah. to uh I mean, food banks and yeah, because it's crazy. It's like in the county that we live in, there's a 25 percent increase in food insecurity. So when you think about the holidays coming up and, you know, people are stuck in their houses, you know, I mean, you got to you got to help out because it's like the government is not going to help us. You know, I mean, it, you know, it should have happened. Um <clears throat> Hopefully, by the time people hear this, a giant stimulus package is in their mailbox. Yeah. What if they fuck up and just send one guy a trillion dollars? <laughs> I, I think, wow. They were supposed to, you know, spread it out amongst everybody in the country, but they just gave it to one guy. Like the I biggest, fu bigger than any of the other fuck ups. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me, but you know, but <laughs> I'm man. really happy. To, I wish we could have hung out together live, but so we will. Yeah, we will. We will. We will. And I want people to get this album immediately. And it's, uh, it's Christmas all over. Um, there, there it is. There it is. <laughs> it's so, it's so damn good. And it feels so good. I mean, geez, you sang, let it snow. Are you kidding? I couldn't believe that. I know. But I mean, we, we kept it trashy. Like it sounds kind of trashy, you know, yeah. which I love. You well, know? you can't trash be trashy with Hark the Herald Angels sing. You can't do that. That was, yeah. But the, that one has a very ominous sort of undertone going on there of this. I just, I just pictured being in a subway station, you know? So then we recorded, <laughs> we got a recording of a subway station and put it in there and then, all of a sudden, it's just like, man, this is depressing. Glory but to the right newborn it, king. Glory to the yeah. newborn king. He's born near a turnstile, basically, yeah. is what you're saying. Is The manger is in the subway. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> could be, could be. But then you in walk out. In this world, it could be now. Party. Right, right. 
Uh, that's the, the, I mean, the big thing, the homeless thing is just. That, that's LA, that's like, where we need to help. That's where we need to help because. I think so. Yeah. You know, but, but the government needs to help because they used to take care of mentally ill people. And well, that's what the hope is. That's what the hope is. If that's if that's the plan to help the disenfranchised. Mental health has been. I mean, I've have so many people in my family that have dealt with it. I had mm-hmm. a sister, um, a lot of relatives. It's 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 been something people don't talk about, and yeah. and some people don't want to be in projects. They want to live in a in a tent by the side of the road. They, you, you say, please, we're going to put you in a home in a nice yeah. apartment. They don't want to, they can't do it. They need to go through actual uh, mental rehabilitation and, and, yeah. and they need, it's very, very hard. We have so many people to help and then you want to take, you want to feed your kids. So we're, these are, we're, we're going to have better days. That's, that's all. Uh, that's, that's my sign off is for people to listen to. And watch uh, your special, which is really quite beautiful. And Robbie's adorable. <laughs> please, I've heard please, him called a lot of things, but yeah, I say he's adorable. Please, he's adorable. Give him one of my best uh, Christmas wishes. I will. I will do that, Bob. And thank you for letting me be on the show, man. It's oh, always good. My to God, talk to you, man. you too. Thank you for being here. Thank you, John. Cool. And I so look forward to seeing you. We're gonna. Oh yeah. And We're bring everybody, together. bring the nieces, bring the naked baby, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> the naked baby okay. rolling around. And I'll, I'll bring that. I'll, I'll send you a video. No, that would you be You send really that bad. and I'll send you another video <laughs> of the guy with the big wiener. So, oh <laughs> so uh, stay well and happy holidays. Happy holidays. Have a Mer- great time. Merry and Christmas. And happy Hanukkah. Okay, that was John Resnick of the Goo Goo Dolls, and I'm really looking forward to the new music that he's going to uh, be making and will always make because that's who he is. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Um, I did. I hope you did with me. Uh, get their album. It's really quite fun, especially because we're almost at Christmas, right? Unless you're listening to this after Christmas. In which case, boy, it wasn't Christmas great. Wouldn't have been nice if we'd been outside. Um, it's Christmas all over. You can be outside if you want. It, it's Christmas all over is the name of the uh, album and the special uh, from the Goo Goo Dolls. And uh, you should listen to it. It really kind of feels good, especially. It's good music to put on while you've got uh, your family over and you're uh, carving up whatever the hell you're carving up that's not roadkill i hope don't eat shit that you find out on the street um because you know it could be roadkill with not it has to wear a mask if it's a oh anyway uh wishing you guys all the best sending you uh lots of health wishes and happy holiday wishes to you and your family uh from from me and all the people that make this podcast believe it or not there's some wonderful people behind this podcast there's kate and andrew and Stephen, um and everybody at studio 71 wishing you guys a, a very merry christmas happy hanukkah and a happy happy holiday season and um i'll talk to you before before the year ends lots of love everybody 